Good evening and welcome to another Joylux Happy Hour. We are thrilled tonight to introduce you to a fabulous author, speaker, and healthcare expert, Marianne Stewart, who Joylux has been working with for well over a year now. You'll soon hear from her fabulous accent. Uh, she does work in both the US and the UK. And she's helped really tens of thousands of women around the world overcome both PMS and menopause symptoms without using any drugs or hormones, which I know is not an option for many people. In uh, 2018, she was awarded the British Empire Medal and was recognized as one of the 50 most inspirational women in the Daily Mail, which you'll soon be able to see why. So we have asked for your questions in advance she will be answering those, but if you have any other questions, please feel free to put those in the chat and we'll respond to as many as we can. If you have questions as follow-up, feel free to reach out to Joy Lux and we're happy to connect with her as well. So with that, Marianne, we're thrilled to have you. Thanks for being here and you can take it away. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful for this platform. You know, I absolutely love to tell women that they can manage their menopause naturally and that Menopause is not the end of life as we know it. And that's the most important thing because our surveys show that 96% of women are unprepared for menopause and two thirds of them say they feel robbed of life as they knew it. And because I've been helping women to overcome their symptoms for so many years, probably almost knocking on 30 years, everything we do is based on published medical research and we see these incredible transformations I'm so passionate about the fact that every woman should have the knowledge to not only manage their perimenopause and their menopause symptoms, but also the research shows that we can prevent things like heart disease and osteoporosis and dementia, those things that we're much more predisposed to after menopause. And so it is really, really important when we get to this fork in the road, we know that there are solutions and it isn't just a terrible shame because we're old, we haven't lost the plot because we've got brain fog and we certainly can get our zest for life back as well as getting switched on from the waist downwards because our relationship survey shows that 70% of women feel switched off down there and between 50 to 70% of them have got vaginal dryness. So all of those things are probably the best kept secrets in the world because women don't even communicate to their best friends about that kind of thing. So I'm so pleased to be here to answer your questions. And I think one of the most common things I'm asked is, why do women get symptoms when you get to this stage? We are born as baby girls with millions of eggs and we just don't have a roadmap and that's the problem. None of us are educated or very few of us are educated about what's going on in our body. What we found because we started helping women with PMS in the very beginning of this journey, was that women very often have low levels of important nutrients. So things like magnesium, iron, zinc, B vitamins, um, essential fatty acids, vitamin D, calcium, and so on, are all in short supply. That gets worse as you get older, especially if you've had several babies and breastfed, lived life in the fast lane, and maybe been on a diet or two, maybe had too much alcohol. In the end, you're just left in what I call economy mode. So you're just left really firing on two cylinders instead of four. And it's very hard to feel well. And on top of that, you've got the added whammy of having low levels, if, if any, estrogen, because your ovaries are no longer functioning. And if you think about it, 100 years or so ago, we weren't living much past 50, so it didn't really matter. But now when 40 something represents halfway for so many of us, it's absolutely vital if we want to have good quality life that we learn how to meet our needs at midlife and beyond. It's never too late. And you can, even if you're past menopause, and menopause is just that magic one year anniversary after your last period, and then you become postmenopausal. So no matter where you are in your journey, you can learn to meet your needs and you can feel spectacularly di different. And you'll see if you go to my website, there's a, a film on there with some women talking about the difference that this has made to them. Just going through a natural program and coming out the other end has turned them from being a suicidal heap, someone who thought they had early dementia, someone who was curled up in a ball and couldn't face the outside world, 
people who bombed out of the workplace and they just feel like a shadow of their former selves back to being better, actually better than they can remember because we go downhill so slowly, we don't realize how far down we've gone until we bounce back up again. And so I am inundated with wonderful stories. Every single week of my life, I feel so humbled to be able to work with women and help them to transform into amazing human beings that are there to do whatever they're meant to do in the world and they're not restricted by their health or their symptoms. So that's really what this is all about. In terms of how many women go through this, well, the research shows about 20% of women don't actually suffer with symptoms when they get to menopause. However, they do need to look after themselves in the long term because this it's not magic. Just if you don't have hot flashes and night sweats doesn't mean you get out of this um, without having any, any problems because you can still be pre predisposed to dementia and heart disease and osteoporosis and so on. But the 80% of women who do get symptoms, some of them have mild to moderate symptoms and others, a bit like the women I was talking about before, are really struggling, just struggling to keep it together. And I know from our relationship survey that very often relationships fall apart. Couples don't talk to each other. We've surveyed men as well. And the men feel scared. They feel rejected and frustrated. And they feel like they're living with someone they don't recognize. And the women are so frightened. They feel like rabbits in the headlights. They're scared to have conversations because they don't know where it's going to lead because they think this is how life is going to be for the rest of their lives or worse. They have no clue that they can do a U-turn and feel better than they can remember. So it is so, so, so important. If the only thing you go away with today is hope in your heart that you can feel better, or if it's not you going through this and somebody you know or somebody you live with, please let them listen to this and just know that there are biohacks that you can do at this stage in life that are going to make you feel so much better and make you feel that you want to go on and do things that perhaps you didn't dream that you could possibly do anymore because we see women doing amazing new things and some of them even retrain and have new careers but they do really live and achieve and they feel very powerful understandably because they are they're wise and they can use that wisdom they can put that wisdom to really good use and what that's what this is all about really and why do you, you think to yourself, why do women accept this? Well, I think they accept their fate because they don't know any better. They just think this is how it is. No one told them it isn't. They remember their mom, maybe, and their grandmother being old at 50 or 60. And they think that's their fate. And so it's not until someone enlightens them that they realize that it can be so different. And honestly, when you realize that, it's such an amazing moment. Some people are skeptical to start with, but once they start on the program, even what turned out to be a five-month program, which I was running for years and years in my clinic, and uh, along with my team who were also seeing patients and helping them, in about four years ago, I was in a situation where I was starting out again after I'd been away for a while running a foundation in memory of my daughter. And I was in America having remarried my American husband. And someone introduced me to a filmmaker. And it just by coincidence, actually, I don't believe in coincidences anymore. But um, this woman was running a Facebook live course the next day, and she invited me to go on it. And so I went along with trepidation, because I wasn't very good at technology. And I certainly all the TV I'd done for my own TV show, for example, or other people's TV shows, you always went to hair and makeup. You didn't just point the camera at your face and talk. And so I was really feeling nervous. And she made me make two films that day on my phone and set up a little Facebook group and another two films promised for the following couple of weeks. And within 12 weeks after that day, over a million women saw my films. And so I was, it was like the early days when I set up the advisory service in the UK for PMS. I was just inundated with the most awful stories of suffering, just terrible tales of women who were overwhelmed by symptoms and feeling that trapped, really, and not knowing what to do. 
And so we, my team and I decided that we take the five month program and we turn it into a six week program and we split up the research into six parts so that we had six bite sized modules and it was all done virtually. And at the time I thought we would just be teaching women how to manage their symptoms, not even beginning to dream that even in six weeks, women would be reclaiming their well-being and many of their symptoms would be gone completely and that they would be feeling like a new version of themselves. So it's been an amazing journey. And um, in the end, I wrote my first American book, which was my, it's actually my 28th book, but um, in my first American book, which was published by New World Library and um, called Manage Your Menopause Naturally. And I've had such incredible feedback, even from the book, where women have managed to help themselves and get into a better situation just with knowledge. And so I, I welcome, um, we on my website, for example, we have a free midlife refuel club, which has got tons of content in there. So you're welcome to go to that as well. Um, there are films and downloads and all sorts of information in there. You can assess whether you've got nutritional deficiencies, for example. So it's the beginning of a new journey where you're actually searching to discover what's going on in your body and how you can overcome it yourself. That's that's the key thing. It's not um, a magic wand, sadly. You do have to do some work, but it's not too onerous. And actually, when you get established on the program, it becomes quite enjoyable because you can tailor it to your likes and dislikes and so on and do what works for you as opposed to what work, may work for someone else. So a few questions. Let me tell you um, a few things that people ask me. So one of you sent in a question saying, I'm 47 years old and I've started to experience regular hot flushes and night sweats and they're hurting my quality of life. What can I do to alleviate the symptoms? So hot flushes and night sweats are two common symptoms to menopause. There are lots of other symptoms, but those in particular are known as what's called vasomotor symptoms. And what's actually happening on a biological level in your body is the brain is trying to kickstart your ovaries back into function. It doesn't understand the fact that your estrogen receptor sites within your cells are empty because remember your ovaries are no longer producing estrogen. And it doesn't like empty estrogen receptor sites for a number of reasons. One of them is that the environmental estrogen can get in there and that can be harmful. So it's trying to send thermal surges through your body to wake up the ovaries, not realizing that that's not going to happen anytime soon. And so when we teach women how to consume naturally occurring estrogen in food and some science-based supplements, little and often throughout the day and the evening, we can fool the brain into thinking that you've got normal circulating estrogen and the symptoms disappear. So even in six weeks, going back to my six-week program, even in six weeks, you can annihilate those symptoms so that you're back in control of your thermometer. Isn't that incredible? It's so basic and it's so frustrating that not every woman knows that. So you can find these foods. There's a whole list of them in my book on page 60 in my book, but you can find them in things like soy, flax seeds, red clover. There's all sorts of different things. And as I said, the receptor sites don't stay full for very long, so you need to top up on them little, little and often. The added magic is the research shows that helps, helps to protect your heart. So you're less likely to have a heart attack, for example, if you're consuming naturally occurring estrogen. You're more likely to grow new bone, whereas at the time of menopause, you stop growing new bone and you lose bone. So you're more likely to grow new bone cells, which is great. So it's pre preventing your chances of getting or lessening your chances of getting osteoporosis. And also it lessens your chances of getting dementia. It helps to rekindle your memory and it helps with short and long-term cognitive function. So all really great things to have. And as well as that, your skin, your hair, your nails, and even your vagina. For example, the first study I ever read about the natural menopause was a study that was published in Australia at Monash University and they fed women going through menopause, soy, flax seeds, and red clover. And they found they were able to bring about a similar change in the lining of the vagina to what they would expect to see in women taking hormone repla replacement therapy. So lots of things that we can do for ourselves 
to make ourselves feel good from the inside and showing obviously on the outside because our skin, hair, nails become more healthy when we're in better shape, when we've got good nutrient levels in our body and when we've got our hormones in an optimum range as well. So another question, um, I've been married for 22 years. My partner and I used to have a satisfying sex life, but my sex drive has dramatically decreased in the past two years. Do these changes last forever? What do you suggest to bring the spark back? Well, that um, is a, a kind of short question, but there's a, a quite a long answer to it. So the first thing is it, you're not on your own because as I said before in our relationship survey, 70% of the women felt they'd been switched off below the waist. And it's scary, but that's part of the economy mode scenario that I was describing before. So when you've got low levels of nutrients and when you're out of estrogen, you everything becomes too much. You have little energy, so you're feeling tired all the time. You have much less sense of humor and you certainly have low libido, if any. That's the first thing. The second thing is a lot of women experience vaginal dryness and they don't really talk about it. And therefore, if even if you have a bit of libido left and you know that sex is going to be really painful, you don't want to go there. Understandably, why would you? And so it seems like you've reached an impasse. And that may be what's going on with you because it's scary to think that it's going to be painful. And obviously, you're not going to get all revved up and initiate sex if you think it's going to be an unpleasant experience. So the first thing that we recommend is people focus on getting their vagina sorted out because there's no point revving up your libido if it's going to be a painful experience. So getting your vagina sorted out can be done in several ways. The first thing, as I described, making changes to your diet so that you've got plenty of circulating estrogen. That's key. The second thing is to get your nutrients into an optimum range because you're going to stand the best chance of getting your libido back and having healthy tissues in inside and outside of your body because tissues get very thin over time and that happens because we're lacking. So when we put back into our body what time and nature has taken out and we top up on naturally occurring estrogen, then we're going to plump up the tissues in the vagina as well. And then on top of that, you've got the wonderful red light therapy in V-Fit that can actually help to rejuvenate the tissues in your vagina. So you never have to be in a situation where you're compromised. And that's great because hopefully you can go on having good sex for the rest of your life and you don't have to worry about the tissues tearing and being sore or getting cystitis every time you go near your partner. So it's a, there are plenty of things to do. There are also some supplements that you can take made from sea buckthorn, which help to increase the number of mucus cells in your vagina. So lots of things you can do. And then if your libido doesn't automatically come back, which it does for most women, there are also some supplements that help to rev up your libido, which have been through clinical trials to be shown to be safe and effective. So that's really important as well. Now, let's see the next one. Um, I experienced hot flushes as I got older, but the mood changes and brain fog I'm still experiencing really surprised me. What are some symptoms of menopause that aren't talked about much? Well, I think, first of all, I remember one year, I can't remember how many years ago now, but I was on a book tour in Australia and I was at Menopause the Musical, which many of you may have seen. If you haven't, it's an amazing it's just an amazing evening. You have to go and, and watch it. But I was there for five nights at the theatre and I was signing books in the foyer. And I heard the women's conversations as they were streaming past me. And I heard them saying, been there, done that and got the T-shirt, which I took to mean that they've been through menopause, come out the other end and they're fine now. They don't have hot flushes anymore. But there are so many symptoms that we get that aren't hot flushes and night sweats that we don't necessarily attribute to menopause. So one of them, for example, could be insomnia. Women say that they can very often get to sleep, but they can't stay asleep. And then they wake up and they get to a point where they've been up six or seven times in the night and they give up. And that can make them feel absolutely terrible. They can get panic attacks and palpitations. So I had a couple of patients, one in particular, I remember, who she was on holiday in Australia by coincidence, and she was taken to the ER department by ambulance five times in the space of four weeks because they thought she was having a heart attack. It just turned out to be related to her menopause. 
And when she came on my program within four weeks, she was completely chilled out. She had no anxiety and certainly no panic attacks and palpitations. And she's never had another one since. So that's another common symptom, aches and pains, feeling old before your time, not being able to touch your toes, not being able to do up your shoelaces, not being able to function in the way that you like to, or even exercise in the way that you used to, because you are hampered by the fact that your joints are stiff and just not serving you very well. So those are many of the symptoms that I hear about all the time. Um, I, I mean, there are so many others as well. I think there are probably in the region of about 40 symptoms that have been listed for uh, perimenopause and menopause. And all of those things can be addressed. So for example, when someone comes to our program because they've got hot flushes and night sweats, they don't necessarily think that they're going to be sleeping peacefully and feeling chilled and, and not anxious and they're not going to be achy and they're not going to have any brain fog. That's the, you mentioned brain fog and that could be so scary all by itself because very often women believe that they've got early dementia. And I've had patients who've been investigated for dementia for 10 years, one woman was investigated and she thought she was saying goodbye to her family and it turned out it was nothing to do with dementia. It was just to do with the fact that she was running on empty. And when we corrected that, her symptoms went. She then went on and retrained and became a counselor and is now specializing in women's health and helping women who are in a similar situation to her in the first place. So there, there are so many different scenarios. On the brain fog, I remember I met a woman called Professor Jo Brewis at a conference in London, and she was one of the authors of the Government in the Workplace Review on Menopause. And I think that was published in 2017. And I met her the, a year later, and she confided in me that she thought she had early dementia and she had depression and she was tired. She had spots on her face for the first time ever in her life. And she was constipated, which about 50% of the women in our surveys are at menopause. And I said, come on our program and let's see what we can do. And she did. And within the space of about eight weeks, her symptoms had gone completely. And she not only had no um, mental symptoms, she didn't have any brain fog. She had no anxiety. She had no depression. She, her face cleared up. So her spots had gone completely. And her tummy was sorted out as well. And she went from strength to strength. So instead of leaving the workplace because she couldn't remember her colleagues' names or she lost track of what she was saying mid-sentence, she was actually promoted and made head of department at her university. So I'm really proud of stories like that. We have women, for example, another woman who was a midwife and she was signed off work because her doctor said she had a mental breakdown. I'd helped her with a PMS years before and her perimenopause. So she came back to me in a terrible state and we just worked through it. She got back to feeling better than she could remember. And she's now leading a team of younger midwives and absolutely loving what she's doing. And obviously doing Joe Brewis went on to do so much more research on women's health. And so she's there now as a role model for other women and certainly helping them to unravel this life stage um, because she's feeling well enough to do that. So I think it's really important for us to be able to learn to meet our needs. It makes such a huge difference. And uh, you'll see some of those women I'm talking about in the film I mentioned on my website. So do go and listen to that. The, um, the next thing I'd like to talk a bit more about is phytoestrogens. I've touched on those, Mother Nature's estrogen because it's a key to keeping ourselves healthy as we get older. And it's interesting that they're not very widely known about in the US, much more spoken about in the UK. And in fact, the products that we can get in the shops over there are more extensive in terms of product lines than we can here. Although there are many organic soy products here and you can certainly get golden flax seeds, milled and whole and red clover products. So there are plenty of things that we can do. So Mother Nature makes these little substances called phytoestrogens. So phyto just means plant, and obviously estrogen is the hormone that you had estradiol before menopause. And if you look under the microscope, you'll see that estradiol, the, the estrogen you had before menopause, and the isoflavone, 
look, the molecule looks really similar. It's a bit like spot the difference. It's not identical, but it's very similar. And so when you put those naturally occurring estrogens into your system, you can literally fool the brain into thinking that you've got normal circulating estrogen. And so instead of sending these thermal surges through your body to stop the, uh, to get your ovaries functioning normally again, it doesn't need to do that. And so the symptoms disappear altogether. Now, every single week of my life, I'm asked about phytoestrogens and I'm asked if they're harmful because very often women are told that they are especially if they've got a history of breast cancer in their family or if they've had breast cancer in the past. But the research actually shows that they have a cancer protective effect. And I do talk about that in my book and I've got the research in there as well because I think it's really important that women understand that these things are not harmful. And if you think about Asian communities where they've been consuming these substances, these foods for centuries, they have half the incidence of estrogen dependent cancer and half the incidence of heart disease, dementia, osteoporosis than we do in the Western world. And interestingly, when they followed a group of Japanese women through to America where they moved and obviously assumed a, a Western diet in their new life, they found that they developed these Western symptoms that we complain of rather than in Japan at that time, they didn't even have a term for hot flush in their language. So really interesting how different diet can be so effective at preventing these symptoms. And again, it's a new way of eating. It's not onerous. You don't have to eat. If you, if you don't like tofu, for example, you don't have to eat that. You can just have a bit of soy milk, some edamame beans, some flax seeds. And they're actually quite yummy if you consume them in the right way. And if you don't like those, then you can find other things that are rich in naturally occurring estrogen. And as I said before, there are some supplements that have been through properly conducted clinical trials, which have been shown to be both safe and effective. You can't automatically assume that supplements that you see on the shelf are going to be safe and effective or even contain what they say on the label, sadly. It's not really a regulated industry. So we're very picky about the supplements that we recommend. And again, I go into details about that in my book and obviously on my program, everyone fills in a questionnaire and diet diary and we tailor make the recommendations for each individual, even though they go through the course in a group setting. They have a lot of personal help as well. So that's really important. Another thing that's important as you get older is to stay active. Now, when you're not feeling very well, understandably, and you're achy and maybe you're feeling phobic and you've got brain fog, and you've got hot flushes because you every time you move, you get a flush. So why would you want to get up and exercise? But if you can control the symptoms and start feeling better, then you can get back to exercise. And exercise is terribly important for us on so many levels. So the first thing I'd say that when you're exercising, you release those lovely feel-good hormones that make you just feel better and change your mood. So if you're feeling depressed, it can raise your mood. If you're having mood swings, it can even you out. That's the first thing. The second thing is it oxygenates your brain. And so you're less likely to have brain fog and more likely to have clarity of mind. And that's really obviously important if you're going to hold down a job or do anything, uh, retain facts in your head and even get down on the floor and play with your grandchildren because before too long, even when they're, if they're anything like mine, when they're four and five, they'll be asking you questions that you need to be on your, um, your best, the best version of yourself to be able to answer. So you, you don't want to appear to be confused and old. That's, that's really important. And then finally, exercise also speeds up your metabolism. So at midlife, when our metabolism is slowing down and we're putting fat on, especially around our middle, we need to do something. So being active speeds up the metabolism and that helps to gobble up the fat and redistribute it. So you can tone up and get back into your clothes that you were wearing even 10 years ago and strut your stuff again and feel really well. So again, I think that's it, it's such a boost for your self-esteem and obviously it's gonna make you feel more sexy if you think you look more desirable or more, more like your old, old self instead of a blob that can't fit into your clothes and is just feeling a shadow of your former self. So you've got that choice. You're at a crossroads and you're either gonna go downhill 
or you're going to learn to meet your needs and get yourself back. It's a bit like a racing car going into the pit in a Formula, Formula One race and having everything tweaked, coming back onto the track, turbocharged and raring to go. And that's exactly what happens when you learn how to meet your needs. You have what I call a midlife refuel and that refuel is so powerful and you're back in the driving seat for the rest of your life because you're armed with knowledge that's gonna help you to stay well and to lessen your chances of getting all the nasty things that we're predisposed to after the menopause. The next thing that is key, and I remember being really blown away by when I was reading the literature in the early days when I first started writing about menopause, was that by doing a session of relaxation, formal relaxation, light meditation, or even a guided meditation, you can reduce your hot flushes and night sweats by 50 to 60%. That is absolutely amazing. And I know lots of people have got busy minds and they can't do it easily because they have too many things going through their head when they try and relax. But there are apps that you can use. There's one particular one that we love called Paziz. And um, I've got a discount code for that if anybody's interested. But it, you can try it out free, first of all. But it was created by neuroscientists and it takes you into a deeply relaxed state and charges your batteries so that you feel brand new, you feel like you've been asleep for a few hours and you just feel really on top again. So you can do that when you can fit it into your day, in the afternoon, after lunch, after work or whatever. And even if you wake up feeling anxious, you can do it in the morning. And they have a sleep program in there too, <clears throat> which you can put on in the night. So if you're waking up a lot in the night, you can put that on. The other thing that I find happens is that when you're tanking up on naturally occurring estrogen, I mentioned before that it has a plumping up effect on your tissues inside your body. So as well as your vagina getting dry, your urethra can too, and your bladder. And so instead of being able to hold onto the urine, you tend to have to get up to go to the bathroom, sometimes six or seven times in the night. And when you're consuming naturally occurring estrogen, you're filling yourself up with good nutrients, your bladder behaves in a much better way and so does your urethra. And we have, even after six weeks, we have women sleeping peacefully all the night, maybe getting up once to pee or maybe not even getting up at all. And that's really important. So you, again, another reason to learn to meet your needs because as we grow older, things are only gonna get worse. They're not gonna get better unless we're proactive about it. So that's why it's important to learn how you can get yourself back into really good shape. Now, um, people ask about what dietary changes they can make, <clears throat> excuse me, simple dietary changes. And obviously that depends on the kind of symptoms that they're experiencing, what they should do first of all. When someone goes on our program, it's a bit like a 5,000 mile service because we work out the whole nine yards for them. So we work out their diet and what they should be eating for each meal and snacks and so on, what they should be drinking according to their, their tastes and, and so on. And we work out the supplements as well as telling them what they should be doing in the way of exercise and relaxation according to their symptom set. The, one of the key things when you're going through this transition is that you're not in good shape as a rule and you've got low levels of nutrients and low levels of estrogen and it doesn't take much to set you off so even have a sipping a hot drink can bring on a flush for example and even when you are sipping a cup of coffee that caffeine even if it's decaffeinated can keep you awake at night so the first thing i get people to do is let their hot drinks cool down Keep off caffeine in any form to start with and use decaffeinated drinks or whatever you like. I always have some decaffeinated tea bags or these are herbal tea bags actually in here today. I've got red bush and uh, moringo and I've got chopped ginger at the bottom. And I just keep topping up with hot water during the day and drinking, probably keeping well hydrated. So having the equivalent of a large glass of herby tea or water uh, probably every 90 minutes during the day because you need to just keep flushing through. And that's another key, key thing that you can do. The next thing probably is to never skip a meal. 
make sure that you're well nourished and you've always got a good supply of wholesome nutrients going through to your brain and your nervous system and that you're consuming naturally occurring estrogen little and often throughout the day and the evening so that you can fool your brain into thinking that you've got normal circulating estrogen. And those are probably the key, key things. Um, obviously, there are many other dietary recommendations that we make. But even if you did those few things and you took some time out to do some relaxation every day, and if you're not exercising much at the moment, you can maybe start by doing five minutes of dancing to your favorite music and singing out loud, that will help to get the endorphins going and it'll help to start to build your fitness again. So just those things and maybe taking a few supplements and again, selecting the ones that suit you best. You're probably gonna need a multivitamin and mineral supplement. We've got some, a collection of supplements that we've just put together in a midlife refuel box. So you can uh, again, ask for some information about that and I can send you links to things, but it's really important that you get to work out what's the best kind of initiative for you, and that it's it feels like a good thing to be doing. It may be a bit scary for the first couple of weeks because you're changing habits of a lifetime, but once you get used to it and you select the things that you really like, so you're substituting things in your diet, for things that you really like, it actually is surprisingly enjoyable. And when you start to see the symptoms diminishing, you feel empowered and obviously motivated to carry on making the changes in your diet and lifestyle. And so it, in the beginning, we're helping women and holding their hands to get them going, but eventually they become self-motivated and then eventually they know how to manage themselves in the very long term. So I think um, that that's that's the way to travel. And then lastly, um, some of the most important things that women should know about menopause was some a question that I'm always asked, especially by people in the workplace and by men who I mentioned we've done surveys with. So we've done surveys in the workplace. We've done surveys on men. And I think that the, the first thing that everybody needs to know, well, I, I think probably to backtrack a bit, the Mayo Clinic survey in 2019 showed, this was on doctors and gynecologists, showed that only 7% of them felt adequately educated to help women going through menopause. So I think the first thing women need to know, and men and people in the workplace, is that this is not a life sentence. When someone starts going through menopause, it doesn't mean it's a downward spiral forever. It just means that that person is going through a transition and they need to have this midlife refuel to come out the other end of it. And I think having hope that you can manage, having hope that you can come out the end of this feeling better than you can remember, and you can get back to being the best version of yourself is the key thing that people need to know. And that it isn't doom and gloom. Instead, it's a whole new amazing chapter in your life when you can feel empowered, you can have great sex again, you can keep climbing the corporate ladder. We've been working in the corporate space as well, helping women to, because Forbes says it costs $810 billion globally each year in lost productivity associated with menopause. And we've done surveys in the workplace to show what's going on under the radar. And rather than being prejudiced against women at the time of the menopause, we can just support them and give them knowledge and help so they can get back to feeling really well again. And amazingly, they go on and have exciting careers and pull their weight in the same way that they've been pulling their weight all their work life, competing very successfully with men. And obviously, because so many women are in the workplace now, probably about half the workplace is female and women are expected to go on working for so much longer. We, we need to empower them with knowledge and help so that they're symptom free, so that they can go to work unburdened by symptoms and really just get on with the job in hand. So I think um, if there are any more questions, I'm very happy to answer those. I'm just going to um, see if I can see anything uh, else that you can think about. Um, anyone, I can't see any questions here, I don't think, but if, um, if there are any more questions, then please, you're welcome to send them in. You can send them to either to Joylux, who will pass them on to me, or you can send them to inquiries at marionstuart.com. 
and we'll answer as many of them as we can. In the Midlife Refuel Club, there are so many links to webinars that I've done before, depending on what your symptoms are. I've got one on brain fog. I've got one on libido. There's just all sorts of different information in there. So you don't need to sit there and be scared and suffer. You can actually feel better in a relatively short space of time. So yeah, I hope that you feel empowered, even with the knowledge that I've given you tonight, that you don't have to go on suffering. And I'm um, very happy to carry on. If um, Heather, do you want me to carry on or do you want me to round off? I don't mind which. I think at this point, I don't see any other questions either. So I think we're good. Um, it, and we put up the emails for both questions for both you and Joy Lux. So we're happy to pass those on as we get them. I'm, um, I meant to do a toast to you prior and lucky for me, I have my herbal mint tea here. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's uh, do a toast. Cheers to you. Thank you for the amazing information and the inspiration. And uh, as we always try to say, the most important thing is to talk about these issues and know that you don't have to suffer in silence. There are solutions out there, whatever it is that works for you, but this absolutely can be the best time of our lives. So thanks for getting us back on track. And yeah, and I, I, I love the fact that there are biohacks, you know. I mean, you've yes. got one of them at Joylux, which is amazing. I mean, if you saw what the trans, I mean, I'm sure you do see, but the transformation I see in my patients, for example, who've been using it, even for a short space of time, you just see them smiling again. And in my coaching group, most of them are using it now, but some of them came late to the party. And one or two who started earlier are really egging the others on because they're saying that they're having the best sex and it doesn't hurt anymore and, you know, all those kind of Good. things. And so I tend to kind of collect these amazing biohacks so that people can get back to feeling really good again and not have to have their attention on their body. And that's a whole new situation. Then you've got okay. a blank canvas and you think, well, what do I do next in the, at this phase in my life? Do you know, maybe I've got more disposable income. I've got more time on my hands. I've certainly got more wisdom than I had years ago. And I can reinvent myself. And whether it's swanning off with your partner or retraining or just doing more of what you're doing or playing with your grandchildren or whatever it is, you can do it and feel well enough to do it and not be uh, hampered by the restrictions or the, or the fear. And with COVID in the air as well, which I didn't really talk about, was that high cortisol, which you get when you're stressed, can mimic symptoms of menopause. So you can get things like brain fog and belly fat and depression and fatigue and anxiety and, and insomnia, all of those things because you've got high cortisol levels. So you need to bring those down by doing things that make you smile, make your heart sing and things like yoga and dancing and singing and watching funny movies and laughing with your girlfriends, all of those things. And obviously there are things like adaptogenic herbs as well. But there's so many things you can do to lessen your stress and feel better. And so all it, it, the whole, you know, we're, we've got so much going on in our body. We need to address, one day there'll be a, probably a chip that will go in our system and it will probably recalibrate overnight. But until we get to that point, we have to look at these amazing biohacks hacks and all the wonderful research that's been done to show by researchers all around the world to show that we can have it all at midlife and beyond. It's just a question of tapping into the right research. Agreed. We, we talk to women every day. And one of the things that I think is most frustrating is we're finally at the point where we have a little bit of freedom again. We have the resources, be it time or financial or, you know, maybe kids are out of the house. So you finally are there and then it comes crashing down and you can't enjoy it. So that's not the way anyone wants to see the latter half of their life go. That's for sure. Absolutely. No, I totally agree. We, we are singing from the same sheet. That's yes. sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you for the knowledge and the information and the resources. And we'll pass on any questions. In the meantime, cheers. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great night. Good night.